That has to be an oversight. There's no way Canon is that stupid. Right? Right? <laughs> Canon, dear God. Canon, please. <laughs> Hey, it's Adam Grumble. I am holding in my hand a production Canon R5 Mark II. Thank you to Precision Camera for letting me check out their demo unit. I'm going to be mostly talking about video with a, a sprinkling of some uh, photo features mixed in. Canon is plugged into the Black Magic, and I'm using that to record the screen so we can see what the menus look like and see what stuff is new. I've ordered everything from Precision Camera from way back in 2006 when I first moved to Austin. 2020, I got three of the uh, R5s. They've been amazing cameras, loved them, never had any problems with overheating or anything like that. Uh, so I'm super excited about the Mark II because it's gonna solve some of the frustrations that I currently have with the R5. I found 40 different things that they've upgraded that will impact how I use the camera. So let's talk about those. The number one thing I was looking for for the new upgrade is never having to worry about that 30 minute time limit again. We finally got rid of that 30 minute time limit. Looks like it can go up to six hours. That's my new favorite thing. Number two upgrade. Now we have 10 bit without having to shoot in log. All the different codecs that are included in the new camera. Let's check them out. Now we can shoot 4228 bit, 10 bit. High efficiency, video codec, 10-bit, 422, 10-bit, 422, 10-bit. I still like shooting in 8-bit, so sue me. Uh, without having to have log on, that's nice. Number three, now we have eye tracking. Eye tracking is a feature borrowed from the Canon R3. It is a photo only function, which means once you have calibrated your eyesight, the focus point will go to wherever your eye is looking. And I think you can store up to six different profiles. Speaking of viewfinder, now we have a much bigger viewfinder. So it's similar to the R3. So you'll be able to see more in there. Uh, it's bigger because it has to accommodate the eye tracking. Uh, and it's also really nice. Feels nice against your eye. You can even get a new eye cup for extra light blocking to make that feature even more accurate. Now we have some passive heat management. So there's a vent here on the bottom that passes through and spits out on the side. And we're gonna have a cooling grip, which has an active fan that's gonna blow right through our cooling port at the bottom. And of course, with the new camera, we have better machine learning. So it has built-in profiles there for some sports. So it can anticipate where the ball is gonna go in soccer, for instance. Canon's machine learning AI tracking has been a little weird. I know that using it, it often finds a person in the way background uh, and focuses on their face instead of the clear subject that I'm trying to focus on. So it's improved, so I'm happy for that. Uh, we have better in-body stabilization. So it borrows a couple of features even from the R7. So now you have the option to horizon level. Now we're gonna have face specific auto tracking so you can take a picture of a face. Register people priority, we're gonna turn that on. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is register people. We're going to uh, register people from the images on the card. Photograph people and register, register people on the card, change priority of the people. Look, I am the people, I am priority alpha. So now it's gonna be able to focus on my face if I'm standing in a crowd of other people. That's a cool feature. But we had RAW. No, well, now we have the ability to shoot in S-RAW, which is a smaller 4K RAW version. Before, we could only do 8K RAW. That's a big deal for a lot of people. And I love that it shows you the megabits per second there so you know how much you're gonna chew through. Good times. And now you can have it set to remember your settings from photo back to video so you don't have to keep adjusting it. If you adjust it from outside shots of photo and video, um, then you don't have to reset everything twice, which is gonna be a time saver if you do shoot photo and video. Um, so now we have a new hot shoe, which is gonna be much more weather resistant than the previous little plastic tab that you have in there that I kept losing, uh, which comes off right there. There's the new hot shoe. Uh, this is the new smart hot shoe, which allows you to attach extra accessories, including microphones. Hopefully they get a wireless microphone that goes on here soon. That would be super handy. Ooh, now we have new faster Wi-Fi. 
to allow us to connect to our phone. Okay, so you have the ability to upscale it in camera. We can select our images. Let's use that one, cool. And it's gonna upscale it. It's kind of a gimmicky feature. Neural network noise reduction. Uh, much rather process that at home than process it in camera, but I guess uh, there's probably an edge case where you can use that. Ooh, a lot of people are gonna like this one. We now have C-Log 2 in the camera, not just C-Log and C-Log 3. Why C-Log 2, you may ask? Well, C-Log 2 apparently has better uh, noise in the shadow than C-Log 3. Okay, you're gonna find that under your custom picture profile. We're gonna select our picture profile, and there you're gonna find Canon 709, which is gonna give you a little bit more dynamic range than the standard Canon. Uh, C-Log 2 and C-Log 3. Don't ask me why we don't have wide DR, because I like that one. You can, you can program that one in yourself, so it's fine. Now we also have the option to shoot in 2K up to 240 frames a second. Pretty sweet. Speaking of high frame rates, they also reorganized this a little bit. So now we have the ability to shoot in 120 frames a second with audio. They have it set up differently. You see how the high frame rate is one option, but then you have another option where you can select all the way up to 120 on the normal shooting mode, which is pretty sweet. Now, when you use your uh, high frame rate option, it's 100 megabits per second. You can, you can lower the, um, the, the data rate of your 4K 120p. So now it doesn't have to be a giant, insane, outrageous, silly, large file. Yeah, I bet you can make it a silly, large file if you want to. Another new feature is you have, they brought back from the dead the ability to shoot photo and video at the same time. This will only work if you're shooting in HD and the photos that it spits out are going to be 33 megapixel JPEGs. But uh, if you want to do fast turnaround content creation stuff and you only have one of you, that's a great feature. And the absolute best thing is a full-size HDMI port. Full-size HDMI came out on the GH5 a long time ago, so this has been a long time coming. Very happy that's happening. And of course, one of the cool things is you finally have a physical switch between your photo and video. Way faster, welcome addition. And of course, with the newer processors, we're gonna have better low light processing, which means you're gonna be able to push your ISOs higher while maintaining a cleaner image with less strange uh, color and noise artifacts. And because of that processor, now we have faster readout speeds. It's a backside illuminated sensor, which means we're gonna reduce the amount of skew that we get from rolling shutter, which is good news for fast sports shooting as well as shooting electronic shutter. It does reduce the amount of wobble when you're using in body image stabilization for wide angle lenses. It does not completely get rid of it. It's gonna look pretty similar to the R5. Of course, now we're gonna have faster burst speed. Let's take a look at that, which is gonna be a great thing for people who shoot 30 frames a second. And you're also gonna get a faster high speed sync. Ooh, and guess what? Not only do you have a histogram, but now you have a proper waveform monitor. You know the waveform monitor, that green thing right there? So you can see if you're properly exposed, which is extra handy, especially when shooting in log. Welcome addition. We well, also have a false color option for you psychopaths who use false color. Did you know that it also has a giant recording box around it? So you no longer have to be so embarrassed when you accidentally double tap or you haven't been recording that very important toast or dancer. Brad walking down the aisle, it should be a lot more apparent to you now that it has a giant red box around it. Ah, uh, one of the coolest things now you have in your sound menu. We do have 16-bit, but we also have 24-bit. Record in four-channel audio. Four-channel is cool because you can have the built-in scratch mic. You can have the eighth-inch side microphone, the TRS cable, and you can have audio cable coming in from the new smart shoe. So if you have one of those cool Tascam XLR adapters, now you can use that and get scratch audio. Um, Justin Porter style, you can have audio coming in from all different directions, all into the same camera. Super cool.
And because somebody somewhere asked for it, you now have pre-recording. Pre-recording is going to have a buffer that keeps recording until you press the button, which is really good for wildlife shooters if you're waiting for um, an animal to strike or a bird to land or a bird to take off. Pre-shooting is very welcome with that little red light. We got a tally light on the front of the camera finally, which I do not have on these. So who knows if they're actually recording? Well, I do, I have a monitor over here, but tally light, very welcome, happy to have that. Apparently you can set it to show you how much memory card you have left. Uh, presently it's six hours instead of a percentage. What a welcome, welcome addition. Now we can change our focus ring sensitivity. I like having the focus ring set to uh, allow me to change my white balance. Oh yeah, that, that goes much faster than it used to. Now we have an option to sync time between cameras. I think it's going to have to be an RFI Mark II for it to work. Add news metadata. I'm you, not going to give you a can question. You can you stay categorical? You are fake news. Sir. And now it has a preview for when shooting in stereoscopic. Remind me to give Nathan his lens back. And of course now because we're shooting in high efficiency codecs and all that other stuff we're going to have a new folder structure inside of the camera one that has the photos and then one that has the video so get used to that so it seems like there are three things that i'm very disappointed in in this camera the first one is that you can still not shoot 120p if you're in cropped mode while shooting in 4k so if you're in cropped mode shooting in 4K and decide to shoot in 120p, you will be slipped over into that 2K range. Sometimes you notice it and sometimes you don't. What a pain in the butt. I thought it would be easier to shoot in cropped mode in 4K 120, but apparently it is not. So you're still going to have to watch out for that. Second thing is you no longer have IPB compressed while shooting in 4K at the smallest setting. The smallest bit rate you're going to get out of 4K 24p is going to be 100 megabits per second. Uh, on the Canon R5, you could get it down to about 60, which is great for those long, boring talks that ask for shooting in 4K, but you don't want to chew up all that memory card. Minor detail. The major detail is that your old batteries are going to be rendered completely and utterly useless. Presently, no matter what resolution, you can only shoot in 2997 for video if you're using your old batteries. Now by old batteries, I mean batteries that you bought a month ago, batteries that you bought two years ago. You can now only shoot 2997. There is no 23976 option. There's no 24p option. There's no 60 frames per second option. Don't do us like this. That's an expensive camera. Let's make it work. I am very excited to be using these in the upcoming shooting seasons, especially for weddings, and see what they can really do. You know, you can only really rate a camera if you've been using it on multiple paid gigs over multiple months and years to figure out what its strengths and weaknesses are. But so far, it seems like it has very few weaknesses with a lot of really great strength. So I look forward to using this soon. Thanks for watching. You want to hear what the GIMP hammer is this time? You can only shoot 30p with the old style batteries. That's funny. That's not funny at all. But there is no option for uh, anything besides 2997. If it has less capability than the R5 just because of the battery, I'm flipping my lid if that's true. I got 25 of the other batteries. Not having 24p, there's no excuse for that. And that renders all old batteries completely useless. But to be able to do 2997 but not 24, what can I say? It's not surprising. But you know what you can't adjust? Look, look, look. 2997p. You're stuck with 2997p. Why am I stuck with 2997p? The following functions are restricted due to incompatible battery or in combination with a grip.